Hey y'all, welcome back to Deep Brand Honey. Today we are gonna go over my three cheese baked spaghetti recipe. It starts with my homemade meat sauce. And for that, you're gonna need tomato paste. Recipe calls for crushed tomatoes, but I only had peeled tomatoes. So I use that as well as tomato sauce, a bell pepper, a yellow onion, some garlic, and some basil. It calls for four cloves of garlic, but you can add as little or as much as you like. And the basil, how much you use is up to you. Some of it gets mixed into the sauce when it's done cooking. And then the rest of it gets, I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring, but she is having like a fit in her dreams. Anyway, some of the basil is going to be used to garnish the top. For the sauce, I cooked down two pounds of ground beef. This is 80% lean. You can use turkey or sausage or fake meat if you want to. Season it pretty liberally with kosher salt, and then I break it into little pieces and keep stirring it until there's no more pink remaining. After it's cooked through, I drain it. If you're using a leaner ground beef or like ground turkey, you may not need to drain it. It may not produce that much oil. Um, I also took the extra step this time of wiping out the grease and using olive oil to saute my aromatics, but you can use the grease. I, I don't really, I don't have a reason why I did that. I just do things sometimes. I add a little kosher salt to the onion and bell peppers just to encourage them to release their juices. And then I saute the garlic just until the garlic is really fragrant and just slightly deepened in color. So it'll be kind of white beige when you add it. And when it starts to turn like a light yellow, then it's time to shove it all to the side of the pan and you're going to bloom your tomato paste and toast your fennel seeds. Blooming tomato paste is simply just kind of stirring it around. It'll darken a little bit in color and it will become extremely fragrant. Like you're gonna smell tomato like crazy. Then you're just gonna toast the fennel seed by letting it sit in the pan and toast for a little bit. Then you stir all of that together, including the ground beef that you removed earlier. Get it nice and coated in the tomato sauce. And then it's time to add our canned tomatoes. So like I said earlier, the recipe calls for crushed tomatoes, but I only had peeled tomatoes. So I'm breaking those up into little pieces. And then I'm adding the two cans of tomato sauce. Make sure that you're not using like tomato sauce, like pasta sauce, like a marinara. You're just using plain tomato sauce. And then the recipe calls for a cup of water. I take this water and I pour it in each of the cans. So I pour it in the first can, shake it up, pour it in the second can, shake it up, pour it in the last can, shake it up, and then I pour it into the pot. We just don't wanna waste any of that like tomatoey goodness that's you know stuck inside the cans. Then we're gonna stir it up and it is time to season and really flavor the sauce. So of course I am adding salt and pepper, kosher salt, cracked black pepper, as well as balsamic vinegar, some Worcestershire sauce, crushed red pepper flakes, cayenne pepper, um, dried parsley, ground oregano, Italian seasonings, and herbs de Provence. Then I stir it all up and I give it a taste. I found the sauce to be kind of aesthetic, so I decided to add a tablespoon of dark brown sugar. You can use grated carrot, honey, white sugar, or you can skip it all together. If you like a tangier tartar sauce, tartar sauce. <laughs> and then you're gonna add in your Parmesan rind, cover it, and let it simmer. So normally I would let this sauce simmer on low for a good four plus hours. But I was ready to make the spaghetti this day, so I only did it for two and a half. I let it reduce and thicken like just enough. Then I removed the Parmesan rind and I spooned off any of the excess grease that was on top. This comes from that Parmesan rind and it's really up to you if you want to take the step to remove it. I did. I don't like the way it looks. And the final step for the sauce is just adding some of that basil that we chopped up earlier. Now it's time to build the spaghetti. So I'm using a pound of spaghetti. If you don't use spaghetti, that's fine. It just won't be three cheese baked spaghetti. I also grated up a pound of low moisture mozzarella and some Pecorino Romano and aged Parmesan. Uh, to thicken the bechamel, I'm gonna use a butter and flour mixture. The bay leaf will be steeped in the milk and the nutmeg is added to the bechamel. I use garlic pepper to season the spaghetti noodles and eggs to hold them together just so that it's 
it sets up more like lasagna. And then milk is, of course, for the bechamel sauce. And I have extra cheese just in case I didn't grate enough. So I'm gonna cook my spaghetti in heavily salted water. Cook yours to package directions. Al dente is fine. And then I'm going to heat up the milk. I'm gonna steep the bay leaf in that milk while it heats up. And we're just getting it hot. When it bubbles around the edges, you can turn the pan off and let it rest until you're ready to build the bechamel sauce. Now I'm using a smaller pot to cook my spaghetti. So this means to avoid sticking, I'm gonna to need to stir it and move it around throughout the entire cooking process. You can just use a bigger pot to avoid that. But while the spaghetti is boiling, I'm going to make the bechamel. To do that, I melt the butter and then I sprinkle in the flour and mix those together. My cookware is all metal utensils safe. If yours isn't, you know, don't use metal utensils. Um, but after the flour and butter are mixed together, let it cook for about three minutes to cook that flour taste off. And then add in the hot milk, remove the bay leaf, and then stir in your grated cheeses and your nutmeg. I also want to say that when I added the cheese, that little black dot was a piece of basil that had gotten stuck to the knife. It's just important to me that you guys know it wasn't a fly. After your spaghetti is cooked, you're going to drain it really well, add it to a bowl. Use a bigger bowl than I did. It'll make it easier. Um, and then you're going to add in olive oil, your garlic pepper seasoning, the beaten eggs, the grated Parmesan, and the grated Pecorino Romano. I like to leave a little bit of Parmesan. Um, behind just to sprinkle between the layers but that's up to you it doesn't really matter um, but after you have everything added in the bowl go ahead and give it a stir you want to get the spaghetti coated in the egg and the cheese really really well this is what your bechamel should look like and this is what your meat sauce should look like the way i layer the baked spaghetti is starting with a cup of the meat sauce i spread that out along the bottom of the pan this is a 9 by 13 glass baking dish. It is extra deep. I will link it in the video description. And that Parmesan that I reserved earlier, I mixed it into the mozzarella. I like to do a light sprinkling of cheese over the sauce layers, but that's not really necessary. But next, I add half of the spaghetti noodles spread out into an even layer. And then I'm going to use a generous amount of the bechamel. So I'm going to say this is about a third of the total volume of bechamel. Even though there are only going to be two layers of spaghetti, I only want to use about a third of it because, you know, gravity, it's going to sink. And it just, just do what I say. Um, after the bechamel, we're going to add in a hefty amount of the grated cheese, followed by another even layer of the meat sauce. So I use about a cup or so for the bottom, but for each layer of sauce between, you know, noodles that actually counts as part of the baked spaghetti, I'm using about two and a half to three cups. So after the sauce is added, I did another sprinkling of cheese and now comes the remainder of the spaghetti spread into an even layer, followed by the remainder of the bechamel. And I make sure to get that, you know, evenly spread across all of the top of the noodles. And another little optional light sprinkling of cheese and then a hefty amount of sauce. I'll say I used about three and a half cups of sauce. This is the last layer of it, so go nuts. I did. The top layer is shredded cheese, of course. I did not have enough cheese, so I had to shred some more just to make sure that it had an even coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and admit it. I personally did not like this batch of three cheese baked spaghetti because I added too much damn cheese. I'm not a big cheese person, so. Anyway, I sprinkled a bit of my finishing pepper blend over the top, and then it gets baked in the oven at 375, covered for 15 minutes, and then uncovered for like half an hour. And then I just sprinkle on the basil and let it rest for 15 minutes until it's ready to slice. Now this is what it should look like when you're done. And you see those layers there? They are the reason you want to wait that 15 minutes. Now me, I like my food burning hot. absolutely hate waiting. Um, but if you want it to set up and present properly, um, like similar to lasagna, you need to wait that 15 minutes. Either way, no matter what you do, I think you'll, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Um, recipes will be linked in the video description box and as always i really appreciate you spending some time out of your day with me it was like 10 minutes today so that's a lot um you have a great rest of your week bye